John, as the van has grown, how has its live production evolved? From the moment that you get there and the last shows, how, how has it evolved? I first saw them, I mean, I, I only did them for, I started in 2004. So they've been going a long time before I started. And they had such a reputation. I remember the first time, uh, the first time I saw them play live was actually in America. And I, I was on Lollapalooza tour when it was still a, a big tour. And uh, I'd been out there for a couple of weeks and they came in each um, at Lollapalooza on the main stage, you'd have the main headline act and then you'd have an act that came on afterwards that were kind of the people go home act. And they had loads of sort of English dance acts. So Orbital came out and did it. The Orb came out and did it. And then I walked into production one day and all the guys are sitting there going, we've just had all this, these requirements from this English dance band. And I'm going, the Prodigy, do you know them? And I'm going, yes. And they're going, they want loads of extra speakers on stage. And I'm going, yeah. I said, are they loud? And I'm going, yes but they're supposed to be a dance act. I was going, have you ever listened to their music? Do you know what you've booked? Because they thought it was going to be like, yeah, they because they'd had two weeks of little fluffy clouds with Alex, you know, doing the orb thing. You know, it's, it's yeah, nice, and Orbital doing that kind of nice, quiety dance thing. But people, you know, they could turn it down, people would go, oh, this is nice, chill out, relax. And uh, they booked the Prodigy for the same slot. So the main act was Tool, I think on that, that year. So Tool finished and then the, the quaint English dance act would come on and do a bit of nice fluffy music. And then the Prodigy turned up and I remember the Prodigy starting and Keith running on stage and going, do you fucking want it or what? And all the Americans were going, I don't think so. Hey, are this in the guys, we don't want these guys. And he, they were just, they were brilliant. And I remember thinking, because they had so many more speakers and they were just, the, they were the last band on, they were supposed to be the nothing band. And they came out and just smashed it. And all the English crew were watching the Americans totally panic because there were serious noise levels. And, and you try and explain to Keith there's a serious noise level, he doesn't fucking care. You know, it's that. And it was just hilarious. So they were already completely mad when I joined. I just, I just did more science with the bass. Um, I kind of became a bass scientist and got more more interested in sub to the point where I'm actually now an academic and my colleague Adam at the university, we're now trying to start the world center of sub bass experiments because we're both totally obsessed with sub bass. So most of the world's knowledge about sub bass is going to be centered in Derby. So if you want to know about sub bass, that's the place to come. So. <clears throat> That didn't really answer your question either, did it? But never mind. Next. <laughs> <laughs> it did, it did. Don't worry, man. Don't worry. Estás escuchando LP Podcast.